treat and did like open forum type for eating and stuff. Is that true? That's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's oh. my way, main way out because I I enjoy eating outside <laughs> and they they place the tables like 10 to 12 feet apart. Yeah. They, they put tables all over the yeah. street. I think it's and super cool. It's, yeah. It's really great. And all the good restaurants are open. So we're having a great time. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw that on Saturday when I, I think it was Saturday yeah, or my, Sunday when I drove through there. Yeah, for, yeah. When, you, when you drove through everybody. I know. I was like, oh, I get <laughs> nothing is here. <laughs> well, they actually park cars so that you can't possibly. Yeah, I know it's fully blocked. Yeah, you have to go around. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Yep. Yeah. We're live on Facebook. Good morning, Facebook world. <laughs> so, not that we were swearing before, but you know, now we got a filter. <laughs> All right. So, music is rolling. So, let's get started. All right. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. And not yet, not yet, not yet. Hang on, hang on. Ah, oh, jeez, full swing. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> gotta ramp you up. What? <laughs> I came back, settled down. The weather put me in the ground. This is my town. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 425 show, your place to be for all things real estate and lifestyle related here on the East Side. I'm your host, Nicole Mangina, with Windermere Real Estate. Thank you so much for joining us today. Usually I start with a real estate update, but I'm actually going to skip it this week because we have an amazing lineup of guests that I am so excited to dive into. But I will say if real estate's on the brain, I was just talking with uh, my contractor this morning uh, about doing refinances because the rates are ridiculously low. So if you've got real estate on the brain, I always invite you to reach out. You can find me via email, Nicole at NicoleMangina.com. There you go. So without further ado, today's topic is the arts. It's summertime. We're rolling into fall. This is usually like peak art season. There's concerts and different events and things that we're going to, and that's not happening. Um, but they're still an important part of life. And I thought it'd be great to check in with some local organizations, see how what they're doing and how they're pivoting in the pandemic. So we've got Rob Hunt joining us with the Village Theater in Issaquah this morning. How are you, Rob? I'm great. I'm great. Sunny yeah. day. Thank you. Uh, Patrice O'Neill is here with the Winter Grass Festival. How are you this morning, Patrice? Awesome. <laughs> and Trudy Jackson is also joining us with the Bellevue Youth Symphony Orchestra. Got Good it morning. all out. <laughs> Good morning, Nicole, and everyone out there. Yes, thank you for joining us, everybody. I'd love to just, I, I hear from each of you. Like I said, the arts, it's, I mean, talk, that's what this whole show is about, right? Is it's the amazing organizations that make this an amazing place to live. And these are three of the foundations of our area. And it looks a little different right now. We're not going to plays at the Village Theater and the kids aren't getting together and doing their orchestra um, performances. So how are you, how are you experiencing the pandemic and, and how are you pivoting right now? Who wants to go first? <laughs> We should rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Patrice. <laughs> um, well, winter grass happens typically at the end of February every right. year. Um, but we figured pretty early on that that, that was not going to happen in 2021. So right. the festival has been canceled. Um, and um, we are not quite sure when we'll be able to do that scale of, a, of an event again in person. Um, so we're, we're, um, we're, we've been pedaling really, really hard since March. Um, we, our, our last festival happened just as the, the pandemic was hitting. I know you snuck that one in there. That was perfect. Um, and winter grass is a, it's a bluegrass festival, correct? For people who aren't familiar with, with what winter grass is. Yes, it's a, a, a four-day bluegrass and acoustic music festival. It happens mm -hmm. at the Hyatt Regency indoors. Mm -hmm. um, no porta potties. Um, <laughs> Yay! It's about uh, about thirty different bands from around the region and around the world who who come, and about four or five thousand people a day who are at the festival. Which sounds horrifying at this point in time, right? <laughs> But it's a lovely festival. I've been the last two years. It's, it's really cool. Um, yeah, perfect. 
so how are you pivoting right now? All right. Some neat stuff coming up. Um, our big pivot is um, we decided we didn't want to wait around for 12, 18 months before we could do something again. Mm -hmm. So um, we've created a um, online variety show, which we are just getting ready to launch called Pocket Grass. Love it. And um, what we decided to do was to scale a festival experience to a small screen. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's little and it's short. It's about less than 45 minutes on purpose because we know that people's attention span is way different when they're sitting in front of their computer or looking at their phone than it is when they're in the midst of a whole bunch of people experiencing something together. Um, so Pocket Grass first episode is going to be on September 10th, and we're pretty excited about it. <laughs> That's awesome. Perfect. That's exciting. Um, Rob, tell us a little bit about the Village Theater. You guys, you're an institution. Um, yeah. The Village Theater is. <laughs> you as yeah, well. <laughs> it's uh, it's been quite a ride. Um, we had actually three shows in process where when this hit. Oh wow! Um, and um, we had. Up in Everett, She Loves Me was running. It was in its last um, performances up there last couple of weeks. In Issaquah, we were about to open a brand new musical called Hansel and Gretel and Heidi and Gunther, which is a sequel to the old Hansel and Gretel. It's a really fun show and we were working with the writers and everybody was working really hard to get the show just right. It was all ready to go. And we actually had to shut down on opening night. That was our last hurrah. And that was that was the end of that show. And it, in fact, it's still sitting on stage. Both shows are still sitting on stage because we haven't even been able to call the stagehands back to take them away. Um, oh. Originally, we had hoped that we could um, could remount them because originally it was going to be a short period of time. Yeah. We'd be coming back. So we left them on stage. We were all ready to go. We told the actors, be ready. We'll come back. Uh, that didn't happen. And then the third show was She Loves Me, um, with, or uh, The Wedding Singer, which we hadn't gone into rehearsal yet, but we had just started building some sets uh, mm -hmm. on that one. And so that one just got canceled. And that was um, after we determined that we weren't going to be able to, to um, work on that show. We canceled that show, but we still had hopes that in the summer we could go back and finish the other two shows that wasn't in the card. So we ended up canceling those as well. Um, and just as just before the pandemic hit, we had announced our next season starting in September and started selling season tickets to it. Um, and so um, fortunately, we the people kept buying some season tickets and uh, we've had really great donations and you know, just to tide us over and keep us going. Um, mm -hmm. um, but we aren't able to do theater. We were able to do uh, classes and camps for our kids, as well as some productions. They did some variety shows and, and uh, actually worked on a production all by the Zoom. They designed mm -hmm. sets and costumes, and they put those into, into the Zoom so that when they, they, they do a, a song, and then they'd show the costumes and the sets that would be on stage for that. And it, it was a good experience for the kids. It ties in with something that we've been working on uh, with our programming to include more STEM work. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. in our in our theater programming uh -huh. um, and so this was a lot of stem <laughs> in order to get the zoom and the technical and audio and everything to work um, there was a lot of stem involved in uh, in those theater uh, productions and over the summer and then the camps and uh, we're we're going to be starting our uh, our fall classes as well and that'll be all uh, via zoom and, and uh, uh, we'll zoom into fall. We zoomed into summer and we're zooming into fall. <laughs> I love it. That's great. I, that to me has been um, one of the most enjoyable things actually about doing this radio show. I, I, I've loved it for a, lots of different reasons, but as we're going through this whole COVID thing to check in with people and just find out the creative ways they're adapting. And I love the zoom thing. Um, and how you've been able to do it with the kids. It's funny, our youngest is going to be in eighth grade and the schedules come out next week. And he was saying that the one elective that he had signed up for that he was most excited about was um, 
he was going to do a drama class at school. And he, you know, I think also because all of his buddies were going to do it, I, it's probably better for the teacher that she doesn't have them all <laughs> in one class, <laughs> but they were fired up for it. <laughs> so I think just to get that creative juice out. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good time. I would, a lot of dance classes, and they've yeah. been able to learn dance. It's, oh, that's it's awesome. exciting for them, I think. That's perfect. <laughs> Trudy, tell us a little bit about the Bellevue Youth Symphony Orchestra. Well, um, we have, uh, on our usual program this year, we had 540 mm -hmm. kids uh, mm -hmm. ready to do a concert on uh, March 8th. And wow. About March um, third or fourth, we saw that things were not looking good, and we felt that for the safety of our community and our kids, we would have to cancel. We were going to be at Maidenbower Theater, and we fill it up for um, all of a day because all the kids obviously can't be on stage at once. We have six different orchestras and three small ensembles, and so wow. we do a, set, a series of four concerts. And so we had to get the word out that, that we were canceling that and that was um, expensive. And again, we thought it might be a short-term thing. So we canceled rehearsals for a few weeks and then we canceled them once the schools were closed for sure. We, um, and we rehearse at various schools in the Bellevue School District. We had to cancel the rest of our spring and, and we um, had to refund uh, the tuition for that. Mm. And because we felt it was more important, you know, people were losing their jobs and they needed that money. And so we we're, um, managed to sort of survive. We had to cancel our summer camps, which are the absolute highlight of the year because they're just, they're just fun and, and kids get to know each other better and it's just great fun. But we um, immediately turned into um, working with Zoom and working with video. We uh, did a virtual fundraiser in May. Our fundraiser is usually in the Bellevue Botanical Garden and kids oh. play in various places. How and, cool. Uh, and instead of being a big orchestra performance, it's small performances, solos or quartets or our wind groups. Um, and so we did that online and our, our the, one of the founders of BISO, uh, 93 year old Francis Walton, was able to, part she still plays the cello. No and way. She participated in our virtual fundraiser with a video of her playing. And now we're going into Zoom small classes in the fall. So instead of having a hundred students in an orchestra, we're going to have virtual groups of eight, 10, 15 um, or so working together and maybe a bit more focused, not so much on the ensemble skills, which we usually teach, but on the musicality, um, learning the score, learning what everybody's doing so that you're not just listening to your part or the person next to you, but the whole orchestra. So we think we can get really good learning, it's, even though it's not exactly the same as what we used mm. to do. And we're keeping our fingers crossed for the spring. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, there's a lot of finger crossing going on in the world right now. <laughs> That's awesome. If you're just tuning in today, we're talking about the arts and kind of how they're pivoting, what they've got going on, what an important part they are of our society, um, and also how we can support them. Because I think that's good. And like you, Trudy was saying with the Youth Symphony Orchestra in Bellevue, I think in the beginning, you know, when everything shut down, two things happened. One, we never thought we'd still be in it this far into it, that's for sure. Or at least I didn't. I was like, ah, two weeks, month max, and psh, we're back to normal. Well, we're not. Um, but also I think everybody, or a lot of people, we really kind of battened down the hatches financially because we didn't know how it was going to affect us. But, and there are a lot of people severely affected financially, but there are also a big contingent especially I think on the east side who have not been affected financially and are kind of coming back out of the woodwork. And I think that's another part of what this show is about is to just remind people these organizations are still out there. They still need your help. They kind of need it now more than ever because their other revenue streams aren't coming in. So we're kind of letting you know what they have going on, but also different ways you can donate to support them because 
Um, I don't know about you, but this is one of the things I'm most excited about getting back to is that my husband's a huge music fan. We go to a lot of concerts. Um, we love music in our house, you know, going to things like the theater. It's just, a, it's an experience that cannot be replaced with a screen. We can do a short term, but it's not the same as the live version. So we want to make sure that these organizations are still here when things are back up and running. Um, in fact, I'd love to kind of check in with you guys and hear, um, you, we, we talked about, you know, kind of what you have going on a little bit more of your history, um, kind of how, what the organization is all about. We talked about it a little bit with the youth symphony, but kind of, how did you guys get found? How were you founded? I think I messed that up from a grammar standpoint <laughs> and how can people support you today? Um, how can they keep you going so that you're still here when things get rolling again? Um, Patrice, why don't you take it with the winter grass? Sure. Um, winter grass is 28 years old. We're a nonprofit. Um, we started in um, Tacoma um, mm -hmm. in 1994 was our first festival. Cool. It's been inside, always in a hotel. It's a very weird festival in that respect. Um, it seems like an outdoor one, but I do love that it's inside. And like you said, there's no porta potties. So it's a lot of for that. <laughs> Very cushy. Um, so in uh, 2010, we moved to um, Bellevue and it was the best thing ever that ever happened to us. It was the best. It, uh, we love being in Bellevue so much. We, I've, we never felt so welcome anywhere. The Hyatt has been magnificent. The city has been magnificent. Fans love coming because there's 9 million restaurants like right three steps away from you. Know, from you. Everything is open forever and it's beautiful and, and clean and safe. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place to have a festival. Um, so we're, we're very happy here and we cannot wait to be back. Um, yeah. You know, we're looking forward to that. So to, to kind of keep our heads above water, um, we are very grateful for the support that especially individuals have um, been stepping up and, and, and donating because we very much need that right now. Um, our staff has shrunk by one person and the remaining staff have all taken pretty big salary cuts. Um, but, but we're still working, yeah, <laughs> still paying the bills. Um, so our, our website is super easy. It's wintergrass.com and it's easy to donate um, via the website. Um, and, and we, you'll also find out information about pocket grass and how to watch pocket grass. I know. It's a YouTube channel. I subscribed this morning. I'm excited to check it out. <laughs> well, we we, we did it that way because we really want pocket grass to be super easy for people to participate in. Yeah. So we said, so what does everybody have? Everybody has YouTube. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're, so we're, we're happy about that. And we're also mindful of the fact that while some people, like you say, have not been financially impacted, a lot have. Yeah. So we are, we are, creating like no barrier to, to watching pocket grass. So there's no ticket fee, although we do hope that people who can, can donate to support each episode. But if you can't, watch it and enjoy it and be happy, you know? <laughs> totally, that's great. Wonderful. Rob, how about with the Village Theater? What's, what's how long has the Village Theater been in, around? A while. We actually started in uh, Issaquah in 1979. I love uh, it. Yeah, so it was over 40 years. We had it. This all happened during our 40th anniversary season. Oh, so, darn it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, um, we've been operating. We do mostly musicals, uh, but some plays. And uh, we have a, a year-round youth program uh, training. Uh, we also develop new musicals as sort of our additional to the, addition to the art form uh, program mm -hmm. called Village Originals. And uh, we work with writers from anything from a commission to uh, just working on their play and doing a reading or a workshop or developmental production. And some of them like Hansel and Gretel will go on our, our main stage. Um, and we've had a number of ones go on to, uh, to claim like a million dollar quartet actually started here in Issaquah and went on and to Broadway. Um, really? Yeah. And that That's was great. the 
that was a great uh, we went through Chicago and then went to Broadway but that was uh, that was a wonderful experience and yeah. uh, next to normal was another one that started in Issaquah so um, it was called feeling electric when we did it but uh, it, it got changed over the years it's a great show though um, and uh, about in the um, in the 80s, we uh, started moving our shows up to Everett as well. So we take mm -hmm. a whole season and we started in Issaquah, run six to eight weeks, depending on the show, and then move it up to Everett for four to five weeks. Um, and we've got a great subscription audience up in Everett. The uh, city of Everett has the Performing Arts Center. And so we have an arrangement with them to manage that for them and, and keep it going and, and put our shows in and also rent it to other people um, right. and, and they use it. And, so we've been doing that for a number of years, and um, and our youth program is is year round with camps and and shows during the year, and and uh, um, I'm adding some STEM lately to it. <laughs> it's it's uh, lots of new stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot of new stuff, and and some of our kids go on uh, to to do you know big things. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's been uh, it's been a joy all the way. I've actually been here the entire time. Uh, so, uh, have you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was started in 1979 with the, with the theater and helped helped get it started, and then uh, uh, and then kept it going uh, after everybody else sort of went their separate ways. And I, I like it. sort of the person that's been here all the time. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! It's true labor of love. That's great. Absolutely, that's great. And do you can people donate to the Village Theater? Right Absolutely. Now? Our website is Village Theater. Uh, it's got a T-R-E at the end. Uh, VillageTheater.org. Got it. And uh, there's a place to donate there. And, and uh, that, that is our main way of keeping going right now until we, uh, until we can do plays again. Um, but we, we have a, a good number of subscribers. We're ready to, to, to launch. We had to postpone our entire season. We were right. supposed to open September. We've, uh, said now we'll start in May and we'll do our uh, our season that was supposed to start September and go through uh, July. We'll do it uh, starting in May and going through the following July. So it'll be a two fiscal year single season. Oh, that'll be, wow. That'll be yeah. great. We'll be ready for it. We'll all be so hungry for that kind of stuff. We'll be more than ready exactly. yeah. to do that. Um, that's great. And again, we'll, and we'll have links to all of these organizations on our website as well after the show, nicolemangina.com forward slash podcast, um, so that you can donate to any and all because, and I, the Village Theater, I mean, I know so many people, they all, they have season tickets. This is like their thing, whether it's as a couple or a family, or, you know, you do it with an extended family member. People have a lot of history and tradition wrapped up in going to the village theater for their various seasons throughout the years and you know your dinner that you get before and after and it's a big part of the east side so something we want to make sure is here for 40 more years and many more years after that <laughs> <laughs> trudy how about the youth symphony orchestra well um I'm, I'm a caretaker in a sense because the Youth Symphony was founded in 1963. And yeah. so there have been a number of leaders. I've been here for um, nearly eight years and we've grown a lot. And so the challenge of moving to online um, elements is that it doesn't cover all our costs. We have an office in Bellevue, but which has a big music library. We have thousands of pieces of music that have been accumulated over the years. And we have a big storage unit that is full of percussion equipment ranging from bass drums to marimbas oh, wow. to um, other instruments that we use for our summer camps. So we've got um, a lot to that we want to preserve for when we can get back to having concerts. Sure. And so uh, as we're doing the programming, we are looking for contributions and grants anywhere we can. And um, I, it's just been wonderful. We've had alumni parents who've noticed that we're, we're in need and have stepped, you know, reminded themselves of the pleasure their kids had and have stepped up. And that's really wonderful. Um, so many kids just can't make it through school if they don't have an arts outlet. And yeah. there are lots of kids who, who aren't maybe the coolest or the most athletic, and they find their tribe 
here in our orchestras. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to me that all those kids get a chance to participate. And so we, we don't turn anyone away if they can't afford things. We have scholarships and, and uh, usually only 60% of our costs are covered by tuition. And so um, we still need lots of contributions and um, support and we can't, we'll still be putting music out on our website um, so that the rest of the community can enjoy what these kids are still doing at home. Very creative kids. So I'll just say www.byso.org and uh, look for fun, fun programming and uh, contribute if you can. Yeah. And it's, you know what, you bring up a really good point. I, we have a couple friends whose kids have gone through the um, Bellevue Youth Symphony Orchestra. Like we were talking about before the show, I know you, the BISO is the um, acronym that are kind of the nickname that people have given, but they have had such amazing experiences. And you're right. We all, um, especially as kids, but as adults as well, we all have our thing that kind of nurtures our soul, but also makes us feel feel good about ourselves and music is such a big thing the whole arts community whether it's theater or music the symphony to give these kids an outlet that they can um, nurture that talent but also feel really good about themselves and find finding your tribe is important always but gosh especially when you're a kid and to have this organization I know that you guys do a lot for the kids and I think that's so great yeah so Wonderful. So you guys, so you all have websites. Um, again, if you're uh, just kind of catching the tail end of the show, we're talking about the arts and some of the main ones here on the east side and how you can support them and the great things that they have going on right now. We've got the winter grass festival. You've got pocket grass. It's just, I'm, I always love good branding and I just think that's amazing branding. <laughs> the whole variety shows uh, that you can watch on their YouTube channel. Yeah, and the whole idea of the pocket is it's a small screen. So you can watch it there. You can also donate for bluegrass music. And um, I've been to your festivals two years in a row now. And it's it's amazing, the different types of music to see how people put it together, the instruments alone. Um, just walking around and seeing the craftsmanship that goes into all of that is just mind blowing. It's a super cool experience. Yeah. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we've got the Village Theater in Issaquah, which is also an effort. I didn't realize that until today. Um, but you guys are an East side staple. Um, I mean, a for the adults, you know, for us being able to go, but you've got some great, I love that you're doing kid stuff and the whole STEM thing. Look at you. You're just checking see, we're all checking new boxes. We didn't even know to check before. <laughs> Absolutely. People can donate to that. And we've got the Bellevue Youth Symphony Orchestra, three super amazing, phenomenal organizations here on the East side. We'll have links to everything on the website after the show. If you want to donate, nicolemangina.com forward slash podcast. Anything else you guys want to throw out? We've got about 30 seconds left on the show. Any, anything else you want to throw out that people should know? Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah, I just really so appreciate, appreciate it. it. Great. Yes. Yeah. Great. It's really fun to send this out there and hope that, that uh, people just keep up with the arts. They because will make our community so strong. They do. We will be anxiously awaiting your return. Most definitely. Thank so, you. Thank you for joining us, everybody. So appreciate you being on the show next week or this week for everybody <laughs> else. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye.